In this video, I'll share some really useful tips and tricks and just things that have helped me and just things that I wish I knew years ago. So hopefully one of these tips and tricks will help save you a really annoying headache. The first tip is how to clear cache data. So if I head over here to the library and I scroll down, as you can see, cache. So I have 86 gigabytes of cache data. So let's say you have even more than this, like two or 300 gigabytes of cache data and you wanna go ahead and clear it. So all you have to do is head over here to file and and then scroll down to find delete generated library files and then just click on delete render files and select unused only now you can also delete other ones if you want to but i only want to delete the unused ones because if i delete the other render files i may have to re-render the entire project so again delete render files and then make sure your unused only is selected i'm going to click on ok and you'll see the number in the cache data say 86 and after a minute or so it's going to go ahead and go down and clearing cache Cache data is really, really important because you could literally run out of storage on your hard drive or your computer. So you see, it'll just refresh and go to 86 and now it's at 9.8 gigabytes. So you can see I just cleared cache data and I don't have to re-render on anything because I only deleted up the cache data that was not, that was unused. So there you go, just simple as that. Now you have a lot more space on your computer or your hard drive, wherever you're editing your um, projects. So there we go, just as simple as that. The next tip I wanna go over is just the export settings. So you can see I have a project right here. All I have to do is click on Command E to bring up the export window. Now you can go through and double check all these settings to make sure everything looks good. But if I head over here to settings, what I have it set to is video and audio, and then the video codec is H.264. This is really important, and all you would do is you would click on next, and then figure out where you actually wanna save your video file. So again, these are just my settings when I'm exporting to YouTube and Instagram. Now another really useful tip is exporting like screenshots. Now I actually edit all of my thumbnails in Final Cut and I also do it for my Instagram Reels. Obviously you can use Photoshop or whatever, but if you, you actually can create some really cool thumbnails just natively in Final Cut. So here's a thumbnail for my most recent video. All I wanna do is head over here to this icon and then click on save current frame. Now you should be able to, if you don't see that, you should be able to click on like add destination and drag the current frame into kind of your favorites right here. But all you wanna do is click on save current frame. And then as you can see, you go to settings and now you can just export it either as a JPEG or a PNG or a Photoshop file, whichever whichever file format you want, then click on next. And then you can go ahead and figure out where you wanna ha actually have it saved. So you can literally export screenshots or Instagram covers or thumbnails directly from Final Cut. Now the next tip I want to go over is editing like sound effects or music. These are just some really helpful tips to know. So what you want to do is you want to click on this icon right here and this is going to bring up the audio meter. Now you want to select on the audio track and then click on this headphone icon and now just this audio is going to be isolated. Now what you want to do is you want to click on command L to bring up the looping tool. Now type the slash tool on your keyboard and as you can see, now you can see the levels of that audio track and you see if it come, once it comes to the end of that audio track, it's going to literally just loop right back. So you can see, and there you go, it just loop, loops right back. So that's just really, they're just really helpful to know, just to make sure you know you're checking all the levels of your sound effects. So you can you can isolate the audio, loop it, and just make sure you know the audio isn't peaking at all. I've used these tips a lot, especially when I'm doing uh, sound effects. So that's just a really helpful tip to know. You can also right click on it and go to assign audio roles, and you can actually like either edit the roles or have one of the pre-existing ones. So click on this and you can go ahead and just change the color. So that's just a really helpful tip to know when it comes to uh, sound design. Now another really helpful tip to know is adjustment layers. So if I head over here to the titles and generators, now I have an adjustment layer actually in my creator bundle, so you can go ahead and either purchase that, or if you wanna get a free adjustment layer, you can just get one from Ryan Nagel. Now what you can do is you can go ahead and just take this adjustment layer and just apply it on top of this clip. Now adjustment layers are really nice because basically anything you do to this, anything you apply to this adjustment layer is going to affect everything below it. So let's just show an example. So if we go ahead in here and go over to the effects panel and let's just apply like a thermal effect from Brian Delmata. We can apply this thermal effect on top of this adjustment layer. And then as you can see, see we, we applied it onto the adjustment layer and it's affecting this layer and this layer. But if I go ahead and put my plate over here, you can see now the thermal effect is gone. So an adjustment layer is really useful when you're doing color grading or effects 
or you, I can um, click on this adjustment layer right here, place a keyframe on scale, and then go to the end of this adjustment layer, and I can go ahead and just animate the scale. So if I go ahead and just increase the scale to like 250, now we're in, you know, we're just animating the scale of both clips. So we can go ahead and play it right here. As you can see, now the scale, now it's just being animated. So an adjustment layer is just really helpful. So instead of applying the effects onto both clips, you can just simply place all your stuff on the adjustment layer, and again, it affects everything below it. Now another really helpful tip is you can actually save presets. So as you can see I have this clip right here with a color grade, a picture-in-picture, -picture, audio effects applied. Now if I head over here to save effects presets, so click on save effects presets, and then as you can see, see here are all the effects that I can save. So I can, I can save the color wheel, the color adjustments, the color curve, the custom LUT, the picture in picture, and I can also save the spatial conform. And, and now what you can do is you can go ahead and just uncheck whichever ones you don't want to use. So let's go ahead and just uncheck this right here. And let's say we want to have all of this stuff saved. So now we can go ahead and just delete it and we can name it like a uh, YouTube, so YT um, picture. Um, in picture so obviously you can name whatever you want and now we can uh, change the category so we can go ahead and either add it to a new category or we can add to one of the existing categories so you can see color blur basics so let's say we want to just save it to the color tab so again just select the ones you want so click on color and then make sure you have the ones the, the ones that you actually want selected then all you want to do is click on save and now that preset is going to be saved to your effects panel so if I head over here to the effects panel and then I go to the category where I saved it color and then as you can see if I scroll down until I find it so as you can see YouTube P and P as you see the picture in picture now all I can do is just simply apply this effect onto our actual clip right there and literally and now I don't have to apply all these different like you know color adjustments and all these effects it's just really nice knowing that you can literally create your own presets now also if you didn't know this you can actually like add like third-party plugins to Final Cut so let's say there's an effect or a motion graphic that you really want that doesn't come natively with Final Cut you can actually purchase plugins either from my store or from Ryan Nagel or other creators. Now to install them, all you have to do is click on go, go to home, and then make sure you double click on movies, and you want to find the folder motion templates, and all you want to do is you want to drag your folder into which into whichever folder it's supposed to be put into. So as you can see, if I open up my effects panel, I have a film effects, animated letterbox, the RN animation, the RN shake, and then my plugin, the ultimate bundle. So if you didn't know, you can actually like add plugins or basically like third-party extensions to Final Cut to make your life a lot easier. And you can go ahead and check out my website if you want to see any of the, the plugins that I actually um, offer. Now, if you didn't know, you can actually like edit Final Cut Pro projects on an external hard drive so you don't have to actually just edit it on your Mac and use up all of its storage. So I have a Samsung T7 hard drive so as you can see I edit all of my projects on this hard drive. So what you want to do is you want to go ahead I'm going to open this folder I'm going to go ahead and create a new project so I'm going to right click on our new uh, folder and then click on new folder and we'll just name this like example so you can obviously name whatever you want so we'll just name it example and then let's go ahead and open it up and now you can go ahead and like import media so if I go and click on new folder and I want to just rename this um, media and then a little tip is you can head over here and click on like date created so everything can be organized now you can drag all your media into this uh, folder so if we head back out now we, when we need to um, like save a Final Cut library to this actual folder so you can see there's no library here if I open up this folder as you can see see the library is right here so let's open up a project or you can just open up Final Cut so let's just open up this uh, library for an example so we're just gonna open this or you can just go ahead and just open up Final Cut so what you can do is you can see nothing is selected now you don't want to click on anything what you want to do is head over here to file new click on library and now we can name this again example or obviously it's depending on your project so we're gonna save it as example now as you can see I have my uh, Samsung my Samsung selected YouTube tutorials now all I have to do is find the folder that I created so examples as you can see and now so you see we're saved it to my Samsung T7 so all you have to do is just locate where you have that folder saved so examples so saves examples in the examples folder which is in my Samsung and then click on save and now you've created a new library now head over here to modify settings and you want to change this right here you want to change the media so click on choose the cache data you want to make sure it's saved in the same folder and then I also save the backups 
also in the same folder. So click on choose. So you can see the media, the cache data, the backups are all saved in the example folder. And then I just keep it on in motion template folder and then click on OK. And there you go. So example, motion template folder, example, example, and there you go. Now you have that entire library saved to that external hard drive. So if I go ahead and just exit out of Final Cut, and there you go. Now we can go ahead and click, click on back. And all we can do is head over here to the example folder. And as you can see, there we go. We have created the library. So now we're editing this entire project on the external hard drive and not in Final Cut. So we can go and select on this part here. And now we go ahead and create a new project. So click on Command N. And again, we'll just name this example. And now you can adjust the settings to get it where, to get where you like it. Now all you want to do, I leave this stuff the same. I just will change the frame rate, the resolution, or the format depending on my video and click on OK. And there you go. Now you have a new project. So now all you want to do is click on Command I to bring up the import window. And now you can go ahead and select on a video that you want to use. So as you can see, we have a whole bunch of different stuff. So now you can go through and basically figure out what you actually want selected. So you see, you can click on all this different um, actual media. So see, now you can go ahead and just figure out which clips you want to actually import um, into Final Cut. So let's say we want this clip. So selecting this clip, now you can hold down Command to select multiple clips if you want to. So again, just you know, figure out which clips you want imported. Now here are all the settings that I have, so just copy exactly my settings. I have it on Create Proxy Media, ProRes Proxy, 50%, and then I'll just click Import Selected. And now you want to do is just wait for Final Cut to render the project, or uh, render the, the file. Now all you want to do is, all you want to do is click on W to insert the clip so just it's really nice to have these keyboard shortcuts and there you go now you've inserted the clip into your actual like your, your actual like project right here now a couple of the keyboard shortcuts just to be aware of again you can go ahead and click on B to blade the clip so let's say you want to delete this part or you can select on this clip and use the trim tools to just trim the clip. And, th and that's basically the, the basics of inserting and trimming clips. And there you go, it's just as simple as that. Now the last thing that I like to do when I'm editing projects, especially if they're like really big projects, is I'll head over here to view and I'll switch it over to proxy only. So click on proxy only. As you can see, it's just gonna render it out. And now there you go. And normally if, because the way I uh, cr uh, created the import window, because I'm importing this also as proxies, I don't have to transcode any of this media. And then when I'm done, all I'm going to do is click back to optimize slash original and there you go. So instead of having to like go through and, and transcribe all the videos, because of the way I imported the clips, I just need to wait for it to render a little bit and there you go. All the video, the, the video files are already like, you know, transcribed for me. So saves me a ton of time. Anyways, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you found it helpful and informative. If you enjoy watching these types of videos, make sure to go and hit that subscribe button. If you're looking for some really cool Final Cut Pro plugins, check out my website, winkinsmedia.com. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.